Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go through how to get started with LaTeX. First, who should be using LaTeX? In my opinion, if you're in school for some kind of science, so engineering, math, physics, chemistry, etc., and you're writing up homeworks, lab reports, and projects, I would highly recommend using LaTeX. If you're writing a master's thesis or a PhD dissertation, you should absolutely use it, regardless of whether you're in a science field or not. And if you're working now and you're writing proposals, conference papers, and journal papers, I would also highly recommend it. Note, however, that some journals and other fields, for example, medicine, maybe, uh, don't allow you to submit LaTeX documents. They want you to submit Word documents. So here, the New England Journal of Medicine, if I scroll down to paper, uh, prepare materials for submission, you could see they want a preferably an MS Word document. In contrast, here is the AIAA site, and you can see that they have templates for LaTeX. Uh, so basically, you can evaluate your own situation and make a decision for yourself. I'm obviously not going to go through all the details here since this is an introduction video, so you can find links in the description with good resources for the details on writing a LaTeX document. So for example, uh, you can see the LaTeX Wikibook here, you can also see the Overleaf documentation, and you can see the LaTeX Stack Exchange. So let's get started. All the programs that you need are free, and I'm just showing you what I use on Windows, but there are many other options. So the programs that you'll need to follow along here are TechMaker, MicTech, JabRef, and optionally Sumatra PDF. The videos I'm showing next for the download and installation are from 2019, so that's why the versions will be outdated, so just make sure you download the most up-to-date versions. First, we'll download TechMaker, so navigate to the site that I link, download the installer, and install it. TechMaker is where you'll be writing your document, and it's called an editor. You can think of it as an IDE for preparing your documents, similar to how I use the Spider IDE for Python code. Next, we'll download MicTech. Again, navigate to the site that I link, download the installer, and install it. You won't ever open up the MicTech program, but if you don't have it installed, you won't be able to produce your compiled document in TechMaker. So MicTech is what is called a distribution, and there are also other versions such as MacTech and TechLive, for example. Next, we'll download JabRef, which is a bibliography or reference manager. Another popular reference manager is Mendeley, but I prefer JabRef. Navigate to the site that I link, download the installer, and install it. It is into this program that we will import citation references, which I'll show later. The final thing I recommend downloading is Sumatra PDF. Note that TechMaker has a built-in PDF viewer, so you don't technically need this. However, I like to view my PDFs in a separate program, and I like this free viewer. You can see an image here of how I like to write my documents with my computer and monitor setup. In my main screen in front of me, I have TechMaker, and on my second monitor, I have the PDF output, and all the way to the right, I have the folder where my files are located. As with the others, navigate to the link I provide, download, and install. I know the website looks kind of weird with its bright colors, but trust me, it's a good PDF viewer. You may ask, why can't you just use Adobe? Well, in Windows, many programs will lock the document when it's open, so that if another program tries to edit it, you'll have to close the document and then reopen it. And this is a huge pain when editing your document in LaTeX and you want to view your changes. The embedded TechMaker PDF viewer obviously doesn't have this problem, but if you're using an external PDF viewer like I do, you need one that will allow TechMaker to update the PDF without you having to close it and open it again. Adobe doesn't let you do this, to my knowledge, but Sumatra PDF does, and I'll show an example of this later. There's a lot of things you can't do with Sumatra PDF, but for viewing documents and figures, you know, just the bare bones, I actually like it better than Adobe. Okay, so now that we have all the programs installed, let's open up TechMaker and change some settings. This is what my program looks like when I open it up. And to change to the dark mode, go to Options, Configure TechMaker, Editor, and then you can click Dark Theme. You can also change some of these specific colors over here, and I'll just go through real quick, and you can pause the video and change these if you want it to look like mine. Now you can navigate to the Quick Build tab and select the second option here for the Quick Build command. You'll be using the Quick Build to run your file most often, and this option makes sure to update all your figures, captions, equations, references, and bibliographies. And now if you go to the Shortcuts menu down here, there are three that I want to change, mainly because I'm used to using certain MATLAB shortcuts. So the first one that I want to change is Comment, and I'm going to make that Control-R. And then the second one that I want to do is the quick build, and that'll be F5, 
and then the last one is uncomment and I'll make that control T now back in the main window you can see some options here on these vertical columns uh, but once you get used to the syntax you won't use these I don't think I've ever clicked on any one of these buttons but it's nice to know that they're there in case you don't know a command you can also find them in the you know math menu for example uh, some math functions font styles accents spaces etc in this video I won't be going through all the details of the document structure because that would make this video just way too long so I'll point you to the references I mentioned earlier for more information however I'll show you how to start a super simple document here so to start a document, we'll click File, New. This opens up a new document here. And then this is the simplest structure. I'll just copy this in. The simplest structure of a document. This is all you really need. So I'm going to save this as LaTeX Introduction. And it's a .tex file. And so we'll just save that into my folder. So before we run this, let's just put some text in here just so that we can get an output of something. So I'll just say this is a bare bones document. For example, I'll save it and now we can press this button here. There's a lot of options, but just leave it as quick build. We'll press the run button or F5 if you set up your shortcut that way. So if you open up this folder, the original file was just this. This was the only thing in the folder. That's what I've saved it as. That's this tech document. And now you can see a bunch of other files. Don't worry about all the other files. The only other one you need to look at right now is the PDF document that it outputs. So we can just take this PDF and we can open it in Sumatra. And so that's what I'm doing here. And you can see the document right here. It says this is a bare bones document and this thing is just beautiful. So I'll leave this open in Sumatra PDF. And now if I go into here and I edit this text here, I'm going to say, you know, here's another sentence, for example. I'll save it, and then I'll run it again. Sumatra is still open, and if I open it again, you could see, oh, look at that. Here's another sentence. So I close Sumatra PDF, and now I've just opened this document with Adobe, and you could see it here, right? I'm going to add another line here, or another sentence. This is for Adobe. We'll save it and we'll run it. And you can see we get this error and it says I can't write on file, you know, the PDF file. And so this is the reason why I don't like to use Adobe because I'd have to close it and open it up every time. So uh, anyway, this is why I use Sumatra PDF. You can also close this log down here by clicking on messages log. It'll toggle that. Now let's take a look at the bibliography management, which is something that is going to make your life so much easier. So first we'll open up Jabref, and we'll create a new library. So file, new library, it has nothing in it yet. And we'll save this, save library as in the same folder as the tech document, although it doesn't need to be, but I just happen to do this right here. So we'll call this JTE bib, and we'll save it. And that's a .bib file, as you can see up here. Here I'll show you how to add a reference to Jabref, and in a different video I'll go into much more detail about how to set up Jabref, uh, which I'll link to once it's posted. So I've navigated to the AIAA Aerospace Research Central site, for example. We'll type in Schlieren, for example, and maybe we'll you know, move this slider down a little bit. Okay, let's just pick this paper right here, okay? And if you go to Tools and you click download citation we get to this page all other journals or most of the other journals will have a similar way to download citations so I'm gonna leave it as the RIS right now you can also choose the other ones if you want but I'll show that more in my other video so anyway the RIS and I'm gonna say download article citation and you can see it downloads so after downloading I've taken that download and I've copied it into this folder and so we can import this into our library by going into file import import into current library and so I'll just double click on that and you can see it open up opens up this import dialog and it's selected and you can see you could probably select multiple ones if you choose to import multiple and we'll just import the entry and it automatically pops up in here if you double click on this you can edit details in here and the important one to note for this video is the citation key which is what you'll be using to uh, put into your cite command in your LaTeX document. So this is already in the format that I like and I'll show that in my Jabref video. It's year underscore first author's last name underscore some extra stuff. But essentially remember this value. 
So back in our LaTeX file, before the end document line, let's add in the bibliography command. So I'll just add in the bibliography command here, and I use the dot slash here since the bib file is in the same directory as our tech file. You can also add an absolute path here if you store your bib file somewhere else, though. Note that you don't need to put the extension dot bib after the bib file name. The way you cite papers in your document is using the cite command, which we can add now. And so I'll just put in a new sentence that says, let's cite a paper, and we'll use the cite command, and I'm going to add in that citation key from before, and I'll put a period, and I'll save it. You can have multiple citations here by separating them with a comma. Uh, so let's try running this now. We'll run it, and we don't get any errors. But the citation that we get, if we go to the document, the citation is a question mark, which is not great. So we actually need another line before the bibliography line. We will define how the bibliography will be displayed using the bibliography style command, which I'll just copy in right here. And now if we run the document again, it'll again run without error. And if we go into here, we can see now it's replaced with a 1. And you can see in the references section, the actual uh, reference here. Note that some of these things are like, you know, it says like number zero in blah blah blah. These are reasons why you'll have to update some of the fields in the Jabref, but it's also depending on the uh, style that you're using here. So there's a couple different things that you might need to tweak, but essentially this is how you get references into your paper. And if you add more references, move them around, and change entries in Jabref and all that jazz, it will always be displayed correctly in your document as long as you use the correct citation key. So this document is a little boring right now, but LaTeX makes it super easy to include figures, tables, equations, what have you. So here I'm going to quickly show you how to include a figure and an equation. And what I like to do is have a separate folder to store my figures. So in the directory uh, with my tech file, so this is my tech file here, in this directory I like to create a new folder and call it figures. Then in the tech file we will define the graphics path so we'll go up here before the begin document and we'll define the graphics path for where it will search for the figures and you can see again I'm using this relative uh, notation here because it's in the same folder as this tech document. You can also have multiple folders if you want and so let me just copy in that example here just to show you because sometimes I'll split it up into like PDFs and PNGs and so this is the syntax if you want to include multiple folders uh, or folder file paths uh, for all your figures. So if I go into my figures folder you can see that I've placed a uh, figure called JTE logo and it's a PNG file and so this is what I'm going to include in here and so if before the bibliography that's the last thing I'll put in there uh, this is the code for a figure and so you can see here that we have the uh, figure name, JTE logo, and you have to include the uh, extension uh, so that it knows which one to look for. You can add a caption, so this is the caption that you'll see in the paper, and then a label, and this is how you're going to reference this figure in the text, and I like to make the uh, label fig uh, colon, and then I just copy the file name in there. So we can actually run this now, and if I click it here, you can see that we get an error. And this is because we need to include a package first. And so up here, I will include graphics x package, and I'll just type out load packages here because this is where you can uh, use all of these use package commands. And in one of the documents that I show later, you'll see a bunch of these. And so before I run this, let's just reference this in the text. So I'll say, you can see my logo in figure. And then we say reference, and then we use the uh, we use the label, and you can see it'll autofill here. And if I save this and run this now, we should have no issue. And it is done. You can actually see it over here. This is the embedded viewer, which you can get rid of by doing, oops, yeah, the PDF viewer here. But anyway, I open it up in here, and you can see you can see my logo in figure one, figure one. This is the caption in the paper. Now let's quickly write an equation. You can write inline equations, or you can write standalone equations, depending on what you want. So first we'll do an inline equation, which we will define in the line with the dollar sign. So here is an equation, and we'll do dollar sign, you know, like x squared plus y squared equals z squared 
for example we can run this and then if we go to the PDF here we can see here is an equation and look at that now let's write a standalone equation which we can do by using begin oops, equation and it'll autofill the end portion of it and we can just again write x squared plus y squared equals z squared and if we want to be able to reference this equation similar to how we did in the figure we can write oops, label and then I like to write eq colon and we'll just say you know my equation something like that and then the way that you can reference this in here, for example, one of the ways is to say, see my equation in equation, and then we just do reference, and you can auto fill that in. And we can run that. And if we go into here, we can see, see my equation in equation one. This is the standalone equation with the equation number over here. Uh, another way that I like to reference equation is using uh, equation ref, and so we could say my equation is eq, and then instead of ref, do equation ref, and then the same thing. And now if we try to run this, we will encounter an error, and that's because we need to add another package up here called AMS Math, and so I'm just adding that in here. If you're doing any type of more complicated math stuff, you're going to want this package installed anyway. And once I install that, or once I say use package, we can run it again with no errors, open it up, and you can see here my equation is equation 1. The only difference here is that this is in parentheses, um, but I like using equation ref better than the normal reference. So this video is already quite long, but it should have given you the basics on how to start writing your own LaTeX files. And if you watched my do-it-yourself background-oriented Schlieren video, at the end I showed a PDF document which I actually created with LaTeX. And there's figures, and there's tables, equations, references in that document. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the tech file, the bib file, and the figures folder so that you can download it and run it yourself. Uh, and you should get the same PDF document that I've posted. For the journals that accept LaTeX files for submission, they will typically give you template files that you can download since they have their own styles and formatting that they use. You can typically find them by typing in the journal name and then something like LaTeX template. There's a couple more templates that I'll post as well. One is a template for creating a homework assignment, which I made when I was a TA, and the second is a template for writing up a project or lab report. As mentioned earlier, I'll be posting a more in-depth intro to Jabref, I'll probably also post some other videos that go into more detail for certain subtopics like figures, tables, equations, packages, and functionality, which will depend on the feedback that I get from this video. As always, Google is your friend, and that's how I've solved every problem I've encountered with LaTeX. I hope this video encouraged you to convert to LaTeX, or at least try it, and thanks for watching.